So interesting, uh, interesting round of releases uh, at Game Developers Conference this week. Most notably for the hardware enthusiast community is that the 1080 uh, GTX, NVIDIA's 1080 GTX, is dropping in price to $499. Probably because NVIDIA announced the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, an 11 gigabytes graphics card, $699, available next week. And I suspect you will soon be able to read a full review of that card on PC Per. Uh, yeah, it's next week. Um, uh, I did, I just got, (laughs) don't even, yeah, no joking. Um, I, I got the card in, I don't have a driver, of course, you know, all the normal things that occur with this, with these types of releases. Um, it's a pretty impressive looking product, the 1080 Ti. So it's GP102 based, essentially, uh, the same chip that was on the Pascal-based Titan X that launched. I didn't realize this. The, the, that Titan X launched back in August of 2016. So it's been out for, you know, a good while now. You know, five, six, seven months, yeah, that we're up to on this. You have the same CUDA, uh, CUDA core count, 3584. Um, the clock speeds are higher on the on the 1080 Ti. Um, so your, your theoretical peak throughput is better. The interesting... One of the interesting changes to this is that the memory, so they, they've worked with Micron. Micron has faster G5X memory chips now. So now the memory on the 1080 Ti is going to run at 11 gigabits per second instead of 10 gigabits oh. per second. Um, but you, the the frame buffer, the memory capacity of this draw, of this card is 11 gigabytes compared to 12 gigabytes on the Titan X. Uh, and the reason it's 11 gigabytes is if you look at that specs table, uh, the memory interface there is 352 bits, which is an odd sounding number. But if you think if you think about it, it is one 32-bit chunk less than 384. So essentially what they did was they right. took one of the 12 32-bit memory interfaces, disabled it, um, to you know, improve yield, improve cost, whatever the whatever you, you want to look at it as, uh, and thus there are 11 memory controllers. It made more sense to make it even one gig per controller. Thus, you get 11 gigs of of memory, an odd an odd capacity to be sure, uh, but still plenty for 4K and, and and into 5K gaming. Memory bandwidth still remains basically the same because of the smaller interface, but the higher clock speed. You're about four gigabytes per second higher on the 1080 Ti than you are on the uh, Titan X. And then, they, you know, they're tweaking the, the the process some, bidding the chips a little bit better. So they're, you know, 220 watt TDP instead of 250 watt TDP. Uh, but everything else kind of remains the same. The price though is great at $699. It's, you know, you take that, take that how you will, right? I don't recommend everybody go buy $700 GPU. But compared to the Titan X that was released at $1,200. Uh, and reasonable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. And um, my estimate before they announced the price on Tuesday was seven ninety nine, and several other people, you know, that it were in our group as we were waiting for this announcement to occur, had it at eight ninety nine. So we were all, you know, overselling the price, which was good for consumers, right? And, and along with this, the price drops of the ten eighty, and you know, probably ten seventy and ten sixty as well, even if they didn't really officially uh, discuss it. So it's a, it's a. It's an iteratively better product for sure. It's not a revolutionary thing, but like if you go to the next slide down, there that's their performance estimates at a bunch of games you can't read along the bottom. Um, comparing the 1080 to the 1080 Ti, and they're talking about you know about 35% faster on average compared to the GTX 1080. Um, nice. So that's that's pretty good considering. So now it's a $200 delta to move up to that. Um, the only other little quirk to the card, if you look at that shot right there with the out display output connectivity, it does not have a DVI port on it. And, um, and all the 10 series cards did before, all the 9 series cards did before that. Uh, so this is a little bit different for them, but they needed that extra space for cooling to exhaust the air out of the out of the uh, the vapor chamber in there. Uh, they do include a display port to DVI adapter in the box for the Founders Editions. Um, but I, I have not gotten an answer yet on whether or not those are single link or dual link yet. Uh, oh, all the other point is the Founders Edition is going to be selling for the same, is going to be selling for that MSRP. You remember the 1080, 1070, 1060, um, mm-hmm. they were like 50 bucks more or 60 bucks more than the kind of add-in card base price, which caused a lot of issues up front where, you know, 
nobody really thought those were those should be considered the real MSRPs because we didn't see cards at that price point for a very long time. So they're addressing that by um, you know launching these Founders Edition slash reference designs at the same 699 window that their partner cards will be you know set to bottom out at um, in that regard. So it's 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 pretty good, right? Like it's it's preparation for whatever AMD's Vega part happens mm -hmm. to become in the next, you know, three, four, five months. Um, and it's, I, I it, it's going to be a hard sell for AMD to really cross that. And uh, we'll, we'll see what, what they have to do in terms of pricing and performance once we get closer to that. But this is, this is, this looks to be an impressive card. So next week, the reviews will be out. I don't know if, I, if they say exactly what day, so I'm not going to say what day. End of the week, we'll say. How about that? <laughs> yeah.